So the advice our vice abbot often left us with was that when we know that meritorious deeds can have a, an effect on our lives, we ought to try to build uh, meritorious deeds, whether it's generosity, keeping the precepts, or a meditation into our life on a daily basis, because we know that habitual karma is stronger than karma on a one-off basis. And his advice to the people who come to our temple is that any morning, when you have not given alms to the monks, so you haven't given food in the bowl to the monks who pass the front of your house, don't dare to have your breakfast. Any day when you haven't intended to keep at least the five precepts, do not dare to leave your house. Any day when you've not done your meditation and your chanting, don't dare to go to bed. If you can fulfill these three things, then at the very least, you get all three forms of merit on a daily basis. And you won't run the risk of the merit in your life running out. So today we looked at merit. There is the opposite of merit, demerit, which can be collected up by doing bad things. We look at more of that tomorrow, and especially what we mean by bad things and how we can avoid it in our everyday life. That's for tomorrow's lecture. Okay. Uh, there is a little bit of time left in case anyone has any questions. Yeah, go ahead. Um, when they talk about uh, re when you rebirth, um, does it happen to say if I die now, you know, you're reborn uh, sometime in the future, or does it vary? Uh, from what I have understood, uh, time doesn't uh, jump back and forth. You're born at the same time age in a uh, different realm, that's all. So you don't get, can't be, go back in time or whatever by being reborn. You know. Yeah? What are you feeling the cold of it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, uh, sometimes I think it's not about giving, it's more about, uh, well, I just do that, but it doesn't have to be. Mm. How, how do you see that? Uh, there is a school of people who say that true giving is without any thought of what you receive in return. In fact, when you give something, Really the important part of the intention is being able to let go of what you had before, with which you are now letting go with the intention the other person benefits from it. That should be the, the, the uppermost thing in your mind when you are uh, doing an act of dedication like that. It shouldn't be a thought of what are you going to get back from it. But that doesn't mean that you don't have any expectations about how this gift may be helpful for you in the future. But the uppermost thing in your mind ought to be how you're helping this person who is receiving this gift from you. That should be the thing which is at the front of your mind. Uh, mostly the, what you expect in return from a meritorious uh, action is not a material thing. It becomes material when you talk about wealth or prosperity coming back to you. 
But really what you should expect from merit is something which is not material. It, it is fulfillment basically, but how that fulfillment happens, well that's, that's another story altogether. Most people, I think, are thinking not about this lifetime, but about lifetimes to come. And once we leave this world, material things have no more meaning anymore. When you don't have to earn a living anymore, where you don't consume material things anymore, where you don't get clothed in material clothes anymore, when you don't have a physical body anymore, then that's when merit really counts. Because that's, it's only merit that can bring you the ability to survive, the ability to, to keep on living in realms where there is no material existence. But there are some people who I think they, they think of their business and they, they give a little bit of generosity on the side in the hope that it's going to make a difference in their business life to give that element of luck which they need when they are taking risks in their business so that they can succeed. I think that sort of person is not really understanding what, what we mean by merit. Because merit, as I said, is a very pure intention in one's mind. It's on the basis of very pure intention. Therefore, a person giving a hundred baht with a very pure mind would not get the same amount of merit as a person giving 100 baht with a mind that is still concerned with, you know, am I going to get 200 back from this or 500? It's not just the amount which counts, but it's also the purity of the intention. And the Buddha said that the person who is, has a mind filled with faith, before they give something, at the time they're giving it, and the time after they've given it, they have no regrets on their mind. This is a person who gets the maximum of merit. It doesn't depend on the, how much is given. More than that, the person who has gives something which is pure, a pure gift, who is pure in themselves, so they have a pure intention, and also who have a pure recipient, gets more merit than a person who doesn't have purity in these three respects. So it's not just a question of how much is given or what is given, but it also depends on how it is given by the person. So a person who really understands how to make merit is not just someone who gets something extravagant to give, but must also take care of how their mental state is at the time when they are giving it. That the person will really maximize from the amount of merit, uh, the amount of merit coming from that gift. Yeah. Okay. Strange one. It is possible. And in the olden days, uh, the great abbot of Wat Bak Nam, he would set Kunyai, the, the founder of our temple, to do this, to work out how much merit a person was getting from a particular gift, so that they could inform that person. Yeah. And versus a millionaire who is like a million baht donation and it's very little for you. Would they still get the same merit? No, they no, they wouldn't. A person who gives something which is very hard to give, very hard to let go of, gets more merit than a person who gives something which may be a lot but which it means nothing to them. So, uh, why is this? Because you overcome more greed in your mind by that gift. So the amount of money or the value of the gift doesn't, uh, is not proportional to the amount of merit which is given. But all things being equal, the bigger the gift, the more the merit. But if a very poor person gives their last meal, for example, sometimes this happens, like with this poor plowman, for example, who gave his his lunch when he really, uh, really he maybe had nothing else in his house. Yeah? This counted for more than a king giving uh, a pile of, of diamonds for 
for the monk instead. And what if, like, what if someone borrowed money? Doing yeah. The, our abbot says if a person borrows money to make a gift, the person who gets the merit is the one who they borrowed the money from until they return the money. So, in our temple, it's not, we don't prohibit people from borrowing money to make merits, but it is understood that this should only be a temporary uh, solution to the problem, and they should be, they should not make, should make sure they're not uh, put in debt by the, the gift which they have given. Mm. Otherwise, it's the lender who gets the, money, the merit. Purchase merit, <laughs> uh, not directly, no, because it has to come through your intention. It's not just the gift which counts, but also the intention and your ability to let go of that thing. Mm -hmm. But some, some people have tried to make this comparison that you're buying yourself a place in heaven by doing a certain sort of gift. But in fact, it's, that is a very simplistic way of looking at it. As we've seen, it's not just giving things which earns merit. Eh? You can do it by being pure in your precepts. You can do it by meditating more. You can do it by smiling to people. The sort of merit which comes from generosity through material gifts, okay, it only works if you are letting go of that uh, thing if that thing is of value to you. And you might mess it up by regretting it later. So there's more to giving than just uh, letting go of something in your hand to give it into the hands of someone else. It's, it's more than that. And if you understand the background and how this energy arises in your mind, then you realize that it's, it's not as simple as uh, picking up something on a supermarket shelf. Mm. Okay, one last question, I think. I mean, I'm just going to carry on the same thing. I think it, for me, where it becomes a problem is the idea of deliberately trying to cultivate merit, to make as much merit as possible. It's the, that idea of maximizing seems to have an element of greed in it. Because mm. those merits are things that's going to get you basically but in fact, uh, merit itself does eradicate craving from the mind, and merit is also needed for you to reach to enlightenment. So, how the merit brings its fruits, whether it's as a new Mercedes or a longer life, or more ease when you come sit down to meditate. In fact, merit can do all of these things. And this is why, I haven't mentioned it so far because it hasn't been uh, in the notes. It's important when you make some sort of merit uh, to wish, make a wish that is going to help you in a way which is truly useful for you. It doesn't mean that you're trying to get more profit out of this merit than you deserve, but it means that we do good deeds with an aim. And the aim for us as Buddhists should be that we can break free of the cycle of existence. Along the way, okay, some people may wish for more or less of a convenient and uh, comfortable uh, existence. But ultimately, what we're trying to do is to get pure in body, speech, and mind. We're trying to work towards the path and fruits of nirvana. So if that's what you want, then you, when you do something which is meritorious, whether it be keeping your precepts, trying especially hard in your meditation, making a gift into the arms bowl of the monk, it should be in your mind that may this merit help me to Tut, tut, tut. Uh -huh. Is it a Tibetan bodhicitta practice where you also make wishes, but you also extend the 
extend that wish everywhere. So, for so example, um, you know, if you're in bad health, or my parents are making good health, we say, so may all beings enjoy good health. Never make it just for yourself. Mm. Everybody has the same. And do you think it will reach them? Well, one characteristic of merit is that the merit will arise in the mind of the person who does the meritorious deed. Just as if you eat a plate of food, then it goes in your stomach. Just uh, now, uh, I missed my, my lunch today because I'm trying to control my weight. Uh, one of my monks who's a friend, he said, uh, how about you rejoice in the merit of me going for my lunch today? And then you won't feel so hungry anymore. You think that works? Hmm? No, it doesn't. You still feel hungry, okay? Because uh, the person who eats the food is the one who gets full of food, right? And it's the person who does a meritorious deed who gets the merit. There's only one exception. And we met it just now with the fourth category of generosity, which is sharing your merit for the benefit of others. How can they get the merit? Because you, you were the one who did the merit. Maybe it's very higher than the or imagine one. Or can say that it's... Well, the truth of it is, the way in which they can share in your merit is by rejoicing in the merit which you've done. So supposing your mom passes away and she is an angel somewhere around here and she is watching everything you're doing during your ordination. And when you make the wish, may my deceased mother also have some part of this merit of my ordination on this occasion. She says, Sahatu, I rejoice in the fact my son is doing this. I'm happy for him. Through her action of rejoicing, she gets part of your merit. Really, she made the merit herself. But the fact that you have opened up that merit for her to rejoice on, you've helped her in a way. But in fact, to share merit with all living beings, in fact, those living beings have to do the merit for themselves. There's one thing we always do after meditation, or I was taught to always do after meditation, is to share the merit literally go through with your friends and your family, even with your family and friends, and then everybody in the temple, everybody in Bangkok, yeah. spread out. Mm -hmm. But normally we call this uh, spreading loving kindness rather than spreading merits. But in, in a way it's like through the power of your pure intention you are spreading something, you are sharing something good with the rest of the world. But how much they pick up from that, it depends on how, how able they are to pick up on the, the good intentions which you are setting forth. In a way it's like expanding your awareness to have compassion for all living beings. But it doesn't give them merit. But maybe it helps them to be a little bit less aggressive towards one another. Really, the, the, the strongest rule of merit is that you have to do it for yourself, by your own hand, for it to bring you benefit. It's not something you can delegate. So we spread loving kindness, but this is a form of meditation. And it's something which eventually filters through to the level of society and the world. In here it says it as well. You can see the sort of benefits which you can expect to, to bring to the world, but it doesn't happen as immediately. It doesn't happen uh, immediately that uh, after you spread your loving kindness uh, the mm, fish stop eating one another or something like that. You know, it's something which very, very slowly will happen. But it doesn't mean it's a waste of time, but you know, we're making the world slowly a better place. And one day, if we have all the catalytic uh, conditions in place, the, all four of them, then maybe we would see the results towards the world much more quickly than we would in the present day. But basically the, the, most, uh, the most sure way to 
accumulate merit is to do it for yourself while you're a human being. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, can you say it again? Uh, do we need merit to be able to make merit again? Yeah, even to be here in the first place already requires a lot of merit. And for you to be able to see the value of doing merit must mean that you have merit in your past. Hmm. <laughs> so what we're doing is building upon our merit. If we didn't have any merit at all, we wouldn't be here in the first place. But we build on this merit which we have, which maybe makes us curious to, to ordain as a monk. We build on that to actually go through with it to the ordination. And hopefully, once we are a monk, we can build on that further by meditating better than we ever did before. So we build upon the merit which we have. You have to? Mm. Well, it's, it's always, uh, it's both of it. Uh, we use up merits as we go through our life. To be able to live for a month without having to look for any food. You know, people bring us the food the whole time. It's important that we behave well, so that at least we're not in debt as a result of all this which we are given. But if for a monk, the way we pay back the debt is not uh, in kind, but by practicing well. And if we have the opportunity to also to teach for the benefit, especially for those who have given some support to us. So it's an exchange, but it's not an exchange in kind. So I don't think you need to worry about that if you are satisfied with your own conduct, because you are doing something which they cannot do. Anyway, we better leave it at that. <laughs>